you can see the title of my message there and as all of you know that I have started a series of messages uh, on the Lord's Prayer. Last time we have studied about uh, our Father. What does it mean when we say God as our Father? And uh, that we have explored last time. This time I would like to, uh, stuck. Uh, I got stuck onto the same words but the next word. So this time I would like to bring before you and uh, share with you what does it mean when Jesus taught us uh, to call God or pray to God uh, addressing him as our father in heaven. In King James Version, our father who art in heaven or which art in heaven. Our father who is in heaven. This is a word uh, we can find the first sentence of the Lord's prayer. So which we are going to explore it. So before that, I have a mentee question for you. Uh, what comes to your mind when you think about heaven? I have posted a link in our church WhatsApp group. Uh, please open your mobiles and uh, uh, to your church WhatsApp group. There is a link, a mentee link is open. And with the question, what comes to your mind when you think about the word heaven? Okay, uh, Mr. Krupa and Matilda, if you like, you can share your opinions also, thoughts also, since you are not part of the group. Other, others' responses will be on the screen. Okay, feel free to do that. What comes to your mind when you think about heaven? Some said peace, well, God's dwelling place, okay, heaven is God's dwelling place. Oh, some said full of God's happiness, oh, holy place, full of happiness, no death, okay, God's kingdom, wonderful, wonderful responses. You have three options, you can, uh, you can send three options, you know, th th three of your thoughts can be shared. The guest here, would you like to share any of your thoughts? What comes to your mind when you think about heaven? It's wonderful when all of you are participating in it and sharing your opinions, you know, the technology is helping us very much. We all are connected <laughs> through a different connection that, that is internet. Oh, okay, we are getting few more responses. Uh, God's dwelling, um, beings and saved, sorry, beings that are saved and, and saved souls. Okay, we can uh, see full of God's happiness, God's dwelling place, God's kingdom. Some religions, oh, in heaven also some religions will be there, okay. Great. Holy place and uh, eternity, wonderful. Into the God's kingdom, wonderful. Thank you so very much for sharing your responses. All your respons responses are wonderful. Uh, they are very good and thank you so very much for participating. So... Uh, but I would like to bring before you three uh, opinions of people and then I would like to discuss about those uh, uh, opinions and would like to go towards conclusion looking at the scripture uh, from the God who is revealed in Jesus Christ. Okay, so three, one, uh, I would like to as I said three, op three opinions I will bring before you. The first one is this, as you have seen on the scripture, uh, sorry on the screen. For many people, heaven is God's Google map location and his uh, Google map location of his angels. Am I right? Some of us also have uh, said that. And for some people, heaven is a state or a condition of existence. And some of you said, heaven, when the moment you think about heaven, goodness comes to your mind, holiness or Peace. Somebody said the first one, first response we got was peace. 
no death that is a state of blissfulness where we are comfortable completely where no evil no death and it is a joyful situation where nobody will envy others everyone will have good opinions good thoughts for each other okay where lion and sheep comes together and they will be playing okay and we hear all these kinds of opinions where we think in heaven we are going to see a peaceful joyful blissful uh, healthy no sickness no tear and very comfortable joyful state of life that's what we do think about so for some people heaven means it is a state of state or a condition of existence and for some people heaven is their final destination okay this is not the movie final destination okay but heaven is the final destination where we think okay i lived my christian life and uh, and now i now it is the time for me to rest and i need to go to heaven and where i'm going to find my rest that is the, the end destination for we who put our faith in jesus christ that's what many say am i right you know we christians we put our faith in jesus what's next you live here and witness jesus and then die and rest in heaven many for many people heaven is the main hope in christian faith there is nothing wrong in that but it is the opinion for many heaven is the main hope and destination but when we talk about the lord's prayer when jesus was teaching us our father who art in heaven it is important for us to understand what the real audience of jesus were understanding because jesus spoke in their context we need to look through their context and then we need to take the entire scripture into consideration and through the trinitarian lens or christocentric centric lenses we need to interpret these verses so what we do is we look at these three opinions uh, so as we have we have seen these three opinions now we'll see how the actual listeners of jesus christ understood when they hear the word heaven or our father who art in heaven so how did the listeners of jesus understand the audience of jesus christ we all know that they are they all are jews so understanding the jewish understanding of heaven it helps us to relate to what jesus is trying to communicate or it may, it clears what jesus is not communicating which we are thinking about okay it clarifies us so the first thing the jewish people believe about heaven is it is a physical creation of god in genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it is written in the beginning god created heavens and the earth okay jewish people believe there are not there is not just one heaven there are some say seven heavens there are 10 heavens okay we also see in the new testament in uh, uh, second corinthians apostle paul was writing about his vision uh, so vision and he says he went up to the third heaven and jewish people believe that in the third heaven the righteousness of god's people is uh stored over there even in we by in bible we see jesus was talking about save riches in heaven so the righteousness the righteous riches of people will be saved in the third heaven that's what many jewish people believe but in reality the word heaven in your hebrew uh, is actually the, the the hebrew word for heaven is shamayim which means the heavens which translated as heavens which means the high place something which is very high heaven means earth means what we see the low place and heaven is something very high that's what it means so heaven is a place it's a very high place and in some religious terms or in spiritual terms it is the, it is the holiest place that's what jewish people think about heaven it is a physical creation of god and it is a high place and it is a holiest place and next thing they believe about heaven is all these heavens they belong to god not just heavens heavens of heaven look at the, uh, look at the scripture in deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14 where uh, it is written indeed heaven and the highest heavens belong to the so belong to the lord your god also the earth so earth with all that is in 
the earth, heavens and highest of heavens, in other words, heavens of heaven, that belongs to the Lord. Here, heavens of heaven, when we talk about it, can be taken in two ways. Number one is in a spiritual sense, they can take, this is a physical heaven which we are seeing with the stars, sun, moon and all these uh, galaxies and all. And there is a spiritual heaven or, I mean, a heaven beyond it. That's what, that is one sense we can take. And, but I feel the best sense we can take it is, heaven of heavens means the highest of highest. Holy of holy, which is an exaggeration, which is an expression which we use uh, to, ex uh, to emphasize something very strongly. You know, red, uh, it is strongest of strong, like that. He is the weakest of the weak. It is like that heavens or heaven of heavens, such a high place, such a respected and holy place. That's what the Jewish people understand. And a few more things we can find about Jewish understanding. That is, heaven stands for the seat of God. That's what they think. And we all know very well, what is, let me ask you this question. What is the right picture we get when we talk about heavens? One scripture that comes to our mind very well. One vision that clearly comes to our mind when we talk about heaven. Isaiah chapter 6. Where we all know very well where God was sitting on the throne and there were uh, seraphims uh, and uh, you know uh, there are seraphims and the angels of the Lord in his presence and these seraphims they were having six wings so with two wings they were cover covering their faces and with the other two wings they were covering the foot and the other two wings they were uh, flying and they were worshipping the Lord and saying holy 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 the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of His glory. The picture we find in book of Isaiah has, uh, uh, you know, has taken a very uh, prominent or very important uh, visions in our minds about heaven. The moment we talk about heaven, that's the picture comes to us. Uh, but the reality is, this is not heaven. The vision which we see in Isaiah chapter 6, it is not the vision of heaven. Why am I saying that? Because it is written, there are seraph, uh, here it is written, Isaiah 6 verse 1 to 3, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. His robe was so huge and it filled the temple. But what do we find in Revelation chapter 21 verse 22? When we talk about heaven, when new Jerusalem comes, what it said, there is no temple. If there is no temple, where this robe was placed? It is a picture of a temple. It is a picture of temple, but it is not heaven. I know some of you might be finding it difficult and uh, uh, you feel free to ask your questions after the service, no problem. Uh, but the picture in Isaiah chapter 6, it is talking about the temple where God was sitting and he was worshipped. And this picture has been given to emphasize the focus on temple and the message of the temple by the prophet Isaiah. If you read Isaiah chapter 6, you will come across the same. And then, we, many a times we think heaven is the place where God dwells. Heaven is the Google, Google location of God. God lives there. But let, let, let me uh, let see what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 27. Here Solomon was writing and Solomon was saying, But will God, eat, sorry, will God indeed dwell on earth? Behold, heaven and the heavens of heaven of heavens cannot contain him. If heaven and heavens of heaven also can, cannot contain him, can we say that God dwells in heaven? And where was God before the heaven was created? Genesis 1, 1 says that heaven, uh, in the beginning God created heavens and the earth. There was a point where God created the heaven. And before the creation of heaven, where was God? Does he require a dwelling place? Why do we have dwelling places? Because we have harm around us. So we need a shelter. That's why we have dwelling places. Does God require a dwelling place? And where was he before the creation of heaven? The belief that God lives in heaven 
is actually Zoroastrianism. You might have come across this word Zoroastrianism, Parsi in India we call. Okay, this religion was in Babylon. When Jewish people went to Babylonian captivity, they brought this concept along with them. Because they were believing God is all powerful and the temple of the Lord cannot be destroyed. And all their belief and understanding has been, this, has been uh, collapsed when, Jew, when Judah, the kingdom of Judah was fallen into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Then they started rethinking their theology and some of the thoughts they have adopted from Persian rule. And that's why what happens is, uh, uh, especially uh, in Nehemiah onwards, we find, uh, we find the words is like, you know, God of heavens. These kind of words are repeatedly used. But in the Bible, if you see from Genesis till Nehemiah, you don't find many references about some, diff uh, some uh, kind of heaven where God lives. It shows about highness always. And it started from that moment. So uh, from Babylonian captivity onwards, Jewish people adapted this. So we can understand one thing for sure, that heaven is not God's location. Because heaven cannot contain him. And he, where was God before the heaven created? He is beyond it. And that's why God says in uh, one place, uh, especially in Second Corinthians, sorry, say, uh, First Kings, uh, where when uh, Solomon tells him that he is going to build, sorry, when David tells he is going to build a temple, and he says, "Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. Can anyone build a dwelling place for me?" So heaven is not God's Google location. Okay, let's move forward. How did these people understand? So for them, it is, uh, for, for Jewish people, heaven is not God's location. That's a thought, that's a thought from this. Now, heaven is used as an equivalent to, equivalent word to God. Jewish people, they give high respect to God. They don't even spell the name God. They don't even write the full word God. G space D, that's what they write. Tetragamation, YHVH, because they don't want to write Yahweh name, they have a very high respect and uh, because of that they introduce so many other words also and one of those words is the word heaven. When they use the word heaven as equivalent word to address God. We can find it in Matthew chapter 21 verse 25. The baptism of John was it from, uh, sorry, uh, where was the John's baptism from and then Jesus asked the question. From heaven or from men? What is this comparison between heaven and men? Is it from God or from men? Isn't it? That is the understanding of this word. Interpretation. The baptism of John, is it from God or is it from man? And Matthew uses the word kingdom of heaven. We Very, very much we hear the word kingdom of heaven. We all understand kingdom of God very well. Why is he using the word kingdom of heaven instead of kingdom of God? Because in their culture, they use the word heaven as an equivalent word for God. That's why they used kingdom of heaven. And it is metaphorically used to show the perfect dominion of God's values that we can find in the Bible. As I said, from Nehemiah onwards, it has, they started using the word heaven more. And they used kingdom of heaven, the authority of heaven. Uh, people from uh, authority of heaven and many places the heaven is used. So from this we understand one thing. It is a condition of life of course which is where God's dominion and God's dominion of his values are there. Are, they are going to be prevailing but uh, this is not a reality yet. We all know God's kingdom and his values are going to be established. This is our hope. But it is not a reality yet. For Jewish people also, they were under the suppression of Roman rule. When they talk about the word heaven also, they talk about where, a, play, a place where God's rule is going to be there, the kingdom of God. Jesus preached, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Where God is going to rule, but it is not a reality yet. So, the condition of life which we hope for, 
this is not a reality yet and another opinion uh, about uh, heaven from jews for jewish for jewish people they did not develop the uh, concept called afterlife until they go into captivity of babylon that's why we find in book of acts while uh, P, uh, sorry paul says i believe in the resurrection and angels but sadducees don't believe so he used that word sadducees don't believe in the resurrection which means life after death well, pharisees they do believe in the life after death where did pharisees start pharisees started from babylonian captivity before that they were not there and in fact their theology entire jewish understanding and theology was reformed two times number one is during the babylonian captivity number two was when the second temple was destroyed by titus so what happened was when babylon uh, nebuchadnezzar took over uh, judah and he started he started ruling and um, jewish went in exile they started thinking okay we are going to face better day, better days we all know the song from the rivers of babylon you know when we look down the song it is about the good days that are coming this song is not a new song uh, from pubs but it is from babylonian captivity actually they were looking for the good days and they were, that's what they looked for they were waiting for messiah when titus destroyed the second temple again they all underwent the theological reformation and they started rethinking and they said we all are hoping for good days and these good days are going to be after life that is the next leap the jewish people have taken why am i saying this because in the scripture also it is written john chapter 14 verse 10 to 12 where john say where the where job says for a tree if it dies and burn, if it dies it has hope but for man there is no hope once he is die once he died he is not going to raise from the dead his uh, his eyes are closed to once forever that's what they used to believe they were not believing in resurrection but we christians we believe in resurrection so they took these steps and developed the thoughts about heaven which which uh, they considered heaven as the final destination after the second temple was destroyed by titus in 70 ad from that moment they started it so that's what the jewish people had but when while they were listening to jesus they didn't have this concept they were thinking good days are yet to come but heaven is not the final destination for them yet so uh, what they were believing humans can have access to heaven by god's grace but heaven is possible after destination but sheol is the resting place for them they used to say that there is a possibility for people have access enoch is a good example god has taken him up and uh, we have elijah god has taken elijah these two people are uh, good examples of god's grace for they could access heaven we don't have more details but we know that they are, they could access heaven and but for these people they were believing their life after death is about in living in sheol she in sheol paradise is there where they are going to live in the resting place that's what we find in the parable of rich man and lazarus so abraham's bosom is in sheol that's what they were believing so for them uh, heaven is not a final destination Uh, as i said this word has been used very much up from the persian rule or from the uh, exile onwards started from persian empire probably uh, they had their influence so they used these words so uh, but we are going to live many christians also think that heaven is the final destination for all of us but from bible we understand if you read revelation chapter 21 we we won't be going up to heaven you all know the picture very well what happens the new jerusalem and that will be coming down and we are going to live god is creating going to create a new heaven and new earth what why this new earth for if we are not going to live for whom this earth god is creating a new earth and new jerusalem city is coming down it is a christian hope the book of revelation does not end we going up to heaven of course people to speak about rapture which they meet god and they ultimately 
they have to come back there are so many views about it i'm not going to get into that but still even if the rapture takes place the people comes down okay so book of revelation ends the new jerusalem is coming down it is not we are going up so what we understand from this is heaven is not the final destination of the faithful in christ so heaven is not the google location for g god and uh, the condition of life when we talk about heaven the condition of life this is not it a reality but heaven is a reality we know and number 3 we understand this is not the final destination for christians heaven is not the final destination we are not preaching people to take them to uh, a place we are not transporters okay taking people with the gospel we are taking people from one place to other gospel is about a person not about a place gospel is not about place it's not people say the word jesus is the only way to heaven have you heard many places we see but jesus never said that he said i am the only way to the father jesus is the only way to the father not to the heaven because heaven is not our final destination having said that let us move uh, to wa- uh, look at these uh, three concepts or three opinions from a trinitarian perspective christos and from its christocentric perspective when we call our father in heaven the first thing that comes into my mind is it speaks about an extreme closeness and extreme distance due to the highness and reverence look at the word our father that is such a close and intimate word we discussed about it last week how intimately we are calling god we are we are calling god we are calling abba in an intimate level we are calling immediately next word is heavens heaven is a high place very distant place the moment we talk god we feel father we feel very close and the moment we talk about heaven it speaks about holiness it speaks about the reverence that we have towards god it is like a the exp- expression we can find in genesis chapter 17 verse 1 where god comes to abraham and says the look at the first word he speaks i am almighty the moment god comes to you and tells i am almighty what happens we will be trembled down and we face the ground and we bow down before him and worship him isn't it we can see hundreds of such uh, express hundreds of such uh, examples in the old testament he fell on his face abraham fell on his face these are the words we find moses fell on his face which means they were bowing down you know bowing down also not kneeling you know the word sastanga namaskar means they lie down on the floor that's what the picture we get in entire old testament everywhere and the moment we hear almighty and let us remind remind, remind you another example when god came down to uh, sinai sinai mountain what happened with the great thunders and lightnings the smoke of god was on sinai mountain the people they were trembled and they don't like to go close to the mountain the moment we hear the word almighty that's what it comes so when we are when the moment we talk about father abba we can feel a great comfort the moment we talk about uh, uh, almighty or heaven it speaks about the reverence that we have towards god ye yeah, the moment we see a sublime beauty we will be humbled let me i'm connecting to the old message and that is an experience have you ever had as you are praying our father who art in heaven he is so very high but still my father and that it is speaking about such closeness and such highness of god heaven means heaven means the greatness of god his omnipotence he is the first and he is great and he is the one who made us heaven represents the immensity of the power of god the immensity of his love of his beauty like god manifested himself in the sinai mountain that's what heaven represents and it is not just heaven it is our father 
who art in heaven. So, the moment we pray this prayer, it teaches us about God is located in unreachable highness, but inseparable closeness. Our Father who art in heaven. Let me repeat this sentence. The moment we pray this word, we are recognizing the unreachable highness of God and inseparable closeness with God. Who can separate us from the love of God? Not even death, not heaven, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Such a closeness, at the same time such a greatness. Let's move forward. The moment we pray, our Father who art in heaven, one thing comes to my mind is, it is about the fulfillment of the image of temple. We talked about temple, Isaiah chapter 6, it is talking about temple. What is the picture of temple? Image, understanding of temple. The temple is a place where humanity was united, sorry, where heaven and earth meet. So the temple is a symbolic for union and intimacy with God. Heavens and earth, we separated them very much. In the beginning God created heavens and earth, but they, he created them together. Where is it written he separated heavens and the earth? Nowhere. Heavens and earth, they are together. But we feel we separated. But they are together. And the temple is a picture where heaven and earth come together. The example we can find uh, is in Genesis chapter 28, verse 12 and verse 17. Because of time, I just put two, these two important verses. This is about the vision um, Jacob gets as he is running away from his brother. Uh, there it is written, then he dreamt and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and it is and its top reached to heaven and there the angels of god were ascending and descending on it what is this there is an access between heaven and earth they are ascending and descending they in other words they came together and he was afraid and said how awesome is this place this is none other than the house of god and this is the gate of heaven. Later he called it Bethel, which means the house of God, from which the temple came. The house of God, the temple, they are reminding about the access between heaven and the earth. So the moment we talk about our Father who art in heaven, it is talking about heaven and earth came together. The divine and the human, they came together which has been accomplished completely in the incarnation of Jesus Christ where Jesus is 100% God, Jesus is 100% man, both have come together in Jesus, divinity, humanity came together, where heaven and earth came together, that is the very reason Jesus said destroy this temple I will raise it in Three days, he considered himself as the temple because in him the heaven or earth came together, humanity and divinity came together. So, it's accomplished in Jesus' incarnation where divine and human are united. As we call God Abba, uh, we experience the intimacy in Jesus Christ. So, this is a condition, a state of human, human life, which is a reality now where we join the divinity. We humans, we are united with, the, with God in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. So the moment we pray, our Father who is in heaven, in the incarnation of Jesus, it has been accomplished that humanity and God came together. And this is a condition and it is a reality now. The blissful experience which we talked, it's not a reality yet. But our union with God in Jesus Christ is a 100% reality now. Having said that, let's move to the last point. The moment we talk about our Father in heaven, my, the word comes to my mind is Revelation 3.20, where it is written, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come, will come into him and dine with him and he with me. God, he wants to come into us. He wants to dine with us, which means the fellowship. We are going to have fellowship with God. 
and john chapter 14 verse 20 verse 23 it says at that day you will know that i am in my father and you in me and i in you and that day the the phrase it tells us about a great final day which is going to be in the future on that day what will you know he is saying i am in you you in me we are in the father the union uh, interpenetration ex- existence of interpenetration in one another that's what we are going to experience on the last day or and ultimately that day and that ultimate day is not a final destination of a place and that ultimate last thing is about we realizing ourselves in jesus he in us and we are in the father where the perigrosis life we are participating in it father is in the son son is in the father in complete union our joy and happiness our father in heaven reminds us about it and if we think about final destination that is the final destination for us because jesus said on that day you will realize this and he says and he said jesus answered him if anyone loves me he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with us if you consider heaven is the home of god or even the destination where god lives if you consider that look at these words jesus is saying that who ever loves me obeys my commandments i and my father will come and we make our home with you okay he is going to be live with us he is home he is in us he is going to be with us that's what we are going to realize the moment we say where do we call uh, god as father exam let me ask you for example if you are the president of uh, a nation uh, so if your father is the president of nation when he is in front of people what do you call him mr president right but the only place where we call the president where the son of president calls him as father is at home we know your ancient pictures and uh, ancient movies also we have seen that the children of kings they come and they call king and they bow down before him but once they go home they are different they are going to call them as father and going to jump on them and play with them or whatever open free conversations they can have so he said we i and father are going to come and we make our home with you that is what heaven is about so relationally knowing and fellowship with the triune god is our final destination our final destination is not a place it is communion with the triune god and our destination is communion with the divine that's what it tells us when we pray our father who art in heaven or our father in heaven so in conclusion i would like to quote from pope john paul and may uh, he, he is a pope uh, but he is a great he has a great wisdom years of studying scripture and all out of which he wrote such profound words i found i read entire article and i have taken the essence of the article where he says we know that heaven or happiness in which we will find ourselves is neither abstraction nor a physical place in the clouds but a living personal relationship with the holy trinity it is our meeting with the father which takes place in the risen uh, in the risen jesus christ through the communion of the holy spirit can you see the depth of these words heaven is about communion with the divine as god brought us together in jesus christ and we relate to him in the holy spirit have you thought about this i would like to ask you to think about it in case if you could relate to it pray with me the prayer once and call god our father who art in heaven which is he talking about he is in uh, uh, unreachable highness and inseparable closeness and he is the condition of our life where we are united with him in jesus uh, incarnation 
heaven and earth came together in jesus and our ultimate destination is in fellowship with the father son and the holy spirit with that understanding shall we pray this prayer hmm? can i request you to jo- join me as we pray and uh, if you are comfortable you can stand or whatever you feel you do that let us pray together let us focus on these words see the intensity of these words and relate to them and let's pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen